Well, thanks for having me tonight, guys. I appreciate that. Uh, this is an interesting topic. Um, so bef before I dive into my disclaimers, I'll give you some disclaimers right at the start. Let me uh, just show you guys. I, I went ahead and put some information together on a, on a web page for this talk. Um, it's nice to get invited because then I make time to do this stuff that I would otherwise never make time to do. So thank you for inviting me. Um, so I'm going to see. I think these guys have it where I can share my screen. Can you guys see that okay? Yes. Okay, so that's our website. If you come under the odds and ends, I made this page here called Scope of County Surveyor Review. And then um, I just linked to some stuff up here. So I've got the, the notes that we'll look at. And then I've got a, a sample record of survey I put up. This is one that we're, I think we did the survey last month or the month before. Uh, it hasn't even been in for review yet, so it's very raw. Uh, but I wanted to throw something up to give you guys an idea. Um, it's got it's got our standard notes on there, which we'll maybe talk about a little bit. Um, and then I just I just screenshotted some sample boundary resolution notes, adjoiner parcel notes, and monument notes. Um, we're going to talk probably a little bit tonight about boundary resolutions because I think that's where most of the hangup is in the in the map review. And so I wanted to provide you guys with some sample notes. Um, that's something that we do here, kind of as a standard. It's it's our standard workflow, and I think it. If more surveyors did that, I think it would relieve some of the friction uh, that we sometimes have uh, when we're getting maps checked. So, I wanted to put that up for you guys. Um, and then uh, just some resources from others. I've got the SEAC guide to preparation of maps, and uh, Santa Barbara County has a, a guide online. That it's only a few pages, but I linked that. If you guys have other. Um, if you have examples of what you think a really good record of survey should look like or you have other um, resources, let me know and I'll put them on the page. But I just wanted to show you guys that. So uh, what we will work through tonight is is this uh, document here. I won't leave it up, um, but it, it's there on the website. Uh, you guys can download it. So I wanted to make that available. All right, so let me <clears throat> pull that up where I can see it. Okay, so here's my disclaimers. Um, I don't have all the answers and I'm just one man uh, sometimes people you know I, I, I speak a lot um, and I think sometimes people get the impression that I'm kind of a know-it-all and I think I have all the answers and I don't um, I've been married for 18 years if you learn one thing after 18 years of marriage it's that you're kind of a doof because uh, you get reminded of that on a pretty regular basis so um, you know I just Take me with a grain of salt tonight. I I have no authority. Like I'm just I'm just one man. I'm one surveyor, right? It's like I don't have any special authority from anybody. Um, and you know, you might disagree with some of what I say tonight. Um, the other thing that I, I want to point out is you know um, the law's not always clear. Um, and sometimes we pretend like it's black and white, and it's not. You know, if you're a surveyor and you know very much about the law, you understand that there's some ambiguity, and that leaves room for disagreement. Now I will point out. There's two or three things that I think are pretty black and white in the law when it comes to map review, and I'll point that out. But there's a lot of gray area here, right? And so, you know, how do you deal with that gray area? You know, part of it is you try and be fair and reasonable and not be a hothead, and, uh, you know, you give and take a little. Um, and that's just part of getting getting maps filed, right? So I want to put that out. Um, now, I, it's going to sound like I'm picking on county surveyors a little bit. Um, so before I pick on county surveyors, because I know we've got some folks in public practice here, um, uh, I want to I want to acknowledge some things right out of the gate, okay? Because I'm 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 in private practice, right? But so I gotta I gotta be fair to the county surveyors, right? Uh, there's a lot of garbage map submittals, period. Um, now I work really hard at my company to not do that. Um, so we try really hard, you know, every map goes in with a transmittal letter, whether it's the first submittal or the third, you know, we, we have all the record references, we run the closures, you know, we try and do a really good job on our maps. Um, not everybody does that, you know, there's a lot of county surveyors that get garbage, and I know that. Um, so I want to acknowledge that right out of the, out of the gate. I also want to acknowledge that um, I have some great relationships with, with some county surveyors in California. Um, so our home county, San Joaquin County, we, we got a really good relationship with those folks. Uh, Gwen just, just checked a map of ours up in Tuolumne County. Um, and, I, and I really appreciate, you know, they saved me from some embarrassing things sometimes. So just as an example, we sent a map in, I think Gwen checked it, and on second sheet, I forgot to put some references on some distances. 
I just, we missed it, right? And she flagged it up. Like, thanks, Gwen. You know, that's just, <laughs> so I appreciate that. Um, so, <clears throat> so I want to acknowledge that out of the gate. Now, I will tell you. <clears throat> I'm trying to be nice. Yeah, no, you, d you did great. Thank you. And like, you know, we were looking at those comments. Like, there was only one little thing, I think, that, you know, we might, we might have a conversation with Tuolumne County about on that map. Otherwise, we're going to make their changes and resubmit, right? And so, uh, you know, I'd say 50-50, about half the time, that's how it goes for us. Um, but I will, I will tell you why I think this is really important this topic that we're going to talk about tonight. It's really important because I do think to a large extent the record of survey review process in California is is busted. It's broken. And, and here's what worries me as a professional. What worries me is we've created a system in which uh, the good guys try and file maps and sometimes we make that really hard and the bad guys just don't file. Uh, that's just, you know, that's the bottom line. And so I will tell you um, one of the major challenges I have as a uh, small firm in private practice is competing with guys that don't file maps, period. Um, you know, on a on a $15,000 or $20,000 boundary survey, you know, the record of survey map is 20 to 30% of my cost. And if a guy's not doing that, it makes it really hard. So here's what I'd like the folks in public practice to remember, you know, if I say something that, that kind of gets in your craw a little bit, it's a little sand in your underwear band. This issue with, with record of survey map review is literally the life or death of my business um, because I'm following the law and I'm not going to be in business if I don't follow the law. And the reality is if I can't find a way to efficiently file records of survey maps, I'll be out of business. And the guys that are going to be left in business are going to be the guys that don't file maps. Um, so it's really important. I'm very passionate about it. Um, and we'll talk about this a little bit later, but uh, there's some things that... Um, I try and be super reasonable and, and flexible, uh, but there's things I will not put up with on map review. I tell county surveyors in my transmittal letter, you get three prints from me. You get the first print, I will address comments. You get a second print, I will address a second set of comments. Third print, you're getting mylar, period. I don't do six submittals. Um, and I run into a challenge at a lot of counties where a different person is checking my map every review. I don't do that. I, like you can do that if you want, if you're, you know, and a lot of times it's not a licensed surveyor, it's a tech, right? Um, I just, I, I just, I cannot afford to do that as a business person. Um, you get three submittals and then I'm filing my letter. Um, I get notes put on my maps because of that. It happens. Um, like I got a choice as a private business person. I can have some notes put on my maps or I can go out of business. Um, so I do occasionally get some notes put on my map. Now, I know some other surveyors that freak out when they get a note put on their map. It's not a, like, I don't freak out. Like, it's the county surveyor's right to do that. And uh, if they feel like they need to do that, I let them do it, right? Um, because the alternative is I spend $10,000 getting the map filed, and I just can't afford to do that and stay in business. So, now, one other thing I wanted to mention, um, to, again, this is, this goes to, um, I, I want to try and acknowledge and be fair to the county surveyors and their staff. I will tell you that um, the Bay Area of California is the worst place I practice boundary surveying as far as the standard of care. Um, I work, you know, I do a little bit of work in Southern California. I do a little bit of work in Northern California. I do a ton of work in the Central Valley. Um, we, do, we do a fair amount of work in the Sierra Nevada. I do a little bit of work in Western Nevada. By far, uh, the place I find the most unfiled maps and the poorest quality maps is in the California Bay Area. I don't know why that is. I don't know if it's a historical thing. I don't know if it's a cultural thing, um, but it is. It's tough. So I would not want to be a county surveyor in the Bay Area. Uh, it's re it's really hard. Um, I'll just share a quick anecdote with you. I did a, a survey of three blocks of the financial district in San Francisco. I did an ALTA survey. We filed a record of survey map. Uh, those three blocks had never been put on a, a map. I don't even know how that's possible, ladies and gentlemen. I, that's three blocks of San Francisco, you know, multi-million I mean, multi dollar properties, buildings, right? I, I don't know how many times those things have been surveyed as part of construction or, uh, you know, land title surveys for financing in the last hundred years, but it's more than you can count probably, and nobody ever filed. So I was, you know, in 2018, I was the first guy filing a record of survey on those three blocks. That just blows my mind. Um, so there is a culture 
uh, I think there is some somewhat of a culture in the Bay Area. You know, guys don't file. Gals, guys and gals don't file maps. Uh, so that's a problem. Um, so I just want to put that let's put that out in the open. I think it's an issue, and I think that's part of the reason why there may be some you know some friction between uh, the public and private sides uh, over in the Bay. So what are we going to talk about? I want to walk you through what I think the California Land Surveyors Act actually says. A county surveyor can check on your map. Now, I will tell you as a general rule, um, I, you know, as a general rule, I think county surveyors probably push the scope of of the review they're allowed under law. That's just my, been my experience, right? So I think it's really important. You know, people argue about this kind of stuff, and everybody has a, an opinion. I think it's really important to go back and look at what the law actually says. And so we're going to do that. I'm going to walk you through a couple sections of the PLS Act. Now, everything we're going to talk about tonight relates to record of survey maps, but I think most of it is also applicable to parcel maps and final maps. Uh, you know, the jurisdiction has a little more leverage there because you want to get your map filed, <laughs> right? Whereas a record of, record of survey is a little bit different. Um, part of what I remind people is, you know, the record of survey requirement under California law is um, that is a government mandate. Uh, so it's something the government tells me I have to do as a private surveyor. So it's a little bit different than when you're, coming to the government agency with a land development project and you're asking for permission to subdivide. Um, and I, th I think we have to remember that. So I do think public agencies have a little more leeway um, when it comes to parcel maps and, and, and subdivision maps. All right, so let's go ahead and, and go through these requirements. So um, I'm actually gonna, you know what? I'm gonna share my screen again um, so you guys can see that. <clears throat> All right, are, are you guys, hopefully you're looking at that uh, Word document, that PDF document. Is that what you guys are seeing? Or are you seeing my outlook? Oh, okay. We're seeing, we're seeing a PDF document. All we're right. also seeing a, uh, a counter. A, a, a oh, yeah. Yeah, let me move that over. Sorry. Okay, there we go. All right. Okay, so what does the law actually say? Okay, so the key section in the LS Act is Section 8764, which spells out the technical requirements for record of survey. Right? I encourage you to go read that. I'm not going to read it verbatim to you, but uh, I want to hit some highlights. Okay, so I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven things that the county surveyor can check on your map, in my opinion, under his scope of authority under the LS Act. And this is the section that defines it, right? If it's not in this section, it's not in the scope of his review, in my opinion, okay? Or her review, okay? So here's what we got. The law says you need to show monuments, Okay. Monuments found, set, replaced, or removed, describing their kind, size, and location, giving other data related thereto. I think the county surveyor is within his rights to ask you about the monuments that you found, set, or replaced. You know, they can ask you that kind of information. What'd you find? Oh, uh, you know, what was the record reference? Uh, you know, where was it? That kind of stuff. Okay, so pretty simple. Most of the time, we don't have arguments about that. Um, map content. So this is kind of like your punch list, right? Witness monuments, basis of bearing, bearing and length of lines, the scale of the map, north arrow, name and legal description of property, date or time period of survey, right? So I don't know if there's a half a dozen or 10 things there that they can check, right? Pretty simple list, right? Like in my opinion, you ought to be able to check that in 15 minutes, 30 minutes maybe, right? Okay, um, we're gonna come back to adjoiners because I think that's the one that causes the most heartburn, okay? Uh, memorandum of oaths, if, if you do that, um, Okay, the last, the last bullet in the section says, any other data necessary for the intelligent interpretation of the various items and locations of the points, lines, and areas shown. Now, sometimes I have county surveyors point at that part of, the, of this section and say, see, I can ask you for whatever I need to interpret the map. No, you can't. That bullet item isn't for the county surveyor. That is for the surveyor preparing the map. It says, as determined by the land surveyor preparing the map. Okay, so what does that mean in practice? That means the county surveyor can't ask you to take anything off your map, period, full stop. This right here says you can put whatever you want on your map, you know, within reason, okay? All right, so that's not for the county surveyor. That's for the surveyor submitting the map, okay? Then there's a bullet that says if you're filing a map to meet, uh, I'm sorry, there's a typo there. If you're filing a map to meet an 8762 trigger, you have to say what trigger and explain, you know, why you hit the trigger. 
Uh, we missed that one a lot. I've missed it myself a lot. I've get I've gotten better about uh, putting a note on there. Um, you know, it's just a note that says, "Here, here's the trigger I hit, and that's why I'm filing the map." Okay. I usually will take care of that in my purpose statement, so I always put a purpose statement on my map. Um, so we missed that a lot, but it's right there in the law. It says if you're meeting eight seven six two, you need to put, you need to tell us why. Okay. And then the required statements are spelled out in this um, section. It's actually in a separate section, I think, but this section says you have to put on the required statement and it refers to the next section. Okay, that isn't too controversial. Okay, so let's go back to the one that causes some heartburn, adjoiners. Before you move on, uh, yep. uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask that I will look for hands that go up along the way, if you don't mind. Sure. Because um, you, you, you blew, kind of blew through that uh, last bullet point, 87652 triggers. Um, are you gonna get, are you gonna circle back to that? And if so, that's fine. Okay. So what I what I will do because I'm limited on time. Uh, what I will do is I will point everybody to a CLSA webinar that I did a year or two ago, and I go through section eight seven six two triggers one by one. Um, so I watch that. Uh, <laughs> and it, it it there's it's gray areas there too, but I do I have a separate it's a it's a forty five minute deal just on um. 8762 and I'll just tell you guys if you want you know in a few months if you're not tired of hearing me I'll come back and we can rehash that I, absolutely I could do that so or if you don't mind sharing that link uh, we'd be happy to publish that for yeah okay yeah I'll see if I can find it and, and send it to you tomorrow so okay good question though thank you um, okay so on a joiners here's here's what it says it says the relationship to those portions of adjacent tracks streets or senior conveyances which have common lines with the survey okay what does that mean you know, I think that means the county surveyor can ask you how you fit with the adjoining parcels. You know, like he can ask you about that. You know, what that means is like, yeah, you should have a point, you, you know, you, you ought to pull the deeds for the adjoining parcels. Like, I think the county surveyor can ask you if you did that, right? That That's reasonable. Um, and, you know, he maybe he wants to see some measured versus record on some ties to some of the uh, adjoining property corners. I, you know, that's a little bit of grayer, but I think he, he or she may be able to do that based on this section. Um, what I think it means is no two monument tango, folks, right? Um, that's that's important, right? They they want to, you know, the county surveyor can ask you if you looked at for gaps and overlaps with your joiners. I think, he, I think they're within their rights of doing that. Now, I will say one thing, and I forgot to put it in the notes. I'll try and remember to add it. There is a limitation in this section, a very important limitation that says all of this information has to relate to the to the purpose of the survey. So if you're filing a survey for monument preservation and you're not resolving boundaries, some of this information won't apply, right? In that case, you're not going to have any information on adjoiners. You're not resolving a boundary, right? You are filing a survey for monument preservation or if you're filing a control survey, right? So you have to consider the context of the survey, right? Or the purpose of the survey, which is why it's important to put a purpose note on your survey. Um, all right, let me stop right there and just ask, are there, are there any questions on 8764? Okay. I'll, I'll monitor the, the participant, and if somebody raises their hand, I'll let you know. Okay, so here's what's interesting about Section 8764, if you read it. It doesn't say a whole lot about boundary resolution. All right? It doesn't say anything about measured versus record. It doesn't say anything about what monuments you hold. It's That's a pretty limited review, other than the little blurb there about, about the adjoiners. Um so I think that that statement about adjoiners probably provides the county surveyor with the most scope to, to ask you questions about your boundary resolution. Okay, next up is section 8766. This is a short one. Um, it actually grants the county surveyor the authority to review. So section 8764 doesn't give the county surveyor the authority to review. It just says, here's what you have to do on your survey. And then section 8766 says, the county surveyor can ask you about that stuff. Okay, so this is the section of the law that actually grants the review authority to the county surveyor. Okay, it also adds, he can ask you about the accuracy of your mathematical data. Okay, what does that mean to me? That means he, he or she can make you submit closure reports. I think that's what that means. That's fairly standard practice. We do that with every survey. Okay. All right, now there are a couple very important limitations in this section on the county surveyor review. So I want to talk about those. Okay, here's the first limitation. 
The section shall not require the licensed surveyors, uh, sorry, there's a typo there, submitting the record of survey to change the methods or procedures utilized or employed in the performance of the survey. There is a reason why that limitation got put in this section, right? And to me, it's pretty clear. Uh, the county surveyor can't tell you how to do your survey. Period. He can make, he or she can make suggestions right they can say hey did you check this reference did you look at this but right there it says in pretty plain language to me they can't make you do your survey the way they would do it they just can't that's in the law okay all right here's the second limitation in this section this section shall not require a field survey to verify data shown period i would to me i look at that and I'm like that means if you want to submit a record of survey based on record data you can do that right that's a pretty big limitation they can't ask for any field work at all that's in the law right so they can't ask you to do more field work they can't ask you to go look for one more monument that just it's, it says they can't ask you to do that okay now let me stop right here because i want to point something out we're going to talk about i'm going to come back to this at the end what i'm talking about right now is what this the legal authority get granted the county surveyor to review your map we're going to come back at the end and talk about what do I think the county surveyor can do as a private citizen? Because I think he, has, he or she has some options as a private citizen that that aren't included in the legal authority granted them. And I want to talk about that. And I think there's a way, I've got a suggestion of a way that, that might be a, a better way to handle that. Okay, so we'll come to that at the end. All right. Okay, but, so there's two really important limitations in this section, but they also give the county surveyor a very important right. In this section, this is 8766. They say, in this section, the county surveyor gets to put a nasty note on your map if they want to. Sorry, guys. That's what it says. The county surveyor doesn't like your map for any reason. He can, he or she can say that on your map. They have the legal right to do that. Okay? All right. Next section. Section 8767. Um, so, after your map goes in for review... The county surveyor has the right to tell you what he doesn't like, but he has to do it in writing. <laughs> okay? So pretty simple, right? Um, the other part it says in this section is after the county surveyor tells you what he doesn't like about you, your map, you can tell him to pound sand if you want. <laughs> like if you actually read the section, that's basically what it says, right? So um, it's kind of interesting. Like it basically says in there, once you've gotten the county surveyor comments, you can tell them you're not making the changes if you choose to do that. Okay, last section. 8768 basically says, if you two guys can't get along, the submitting surveyor and the county surveyor, or gals, if you two gals can't get along, uh, the county surveyor gets to put a nasty note on your map, and if you don't like his note, you can add your own nasty note. <laughs> that's basically, that's like, I feel like I'm in preschool, right? But that's what it says. Um... Okay, and I've never had to do that. So I have gotten a note on my map before, uh, but every time that's happened, the county surveyor and I have been able to come to agreement on what the note says, and I've never basically had to put a rebuttal note on my map. Um, I think I have seen that once or twice, but it's, it's not very common. All right, now this is really important because I think a lot of county surveyors don't understand this or their staff don't understand it. County surveyor has 10 days to file your map after you indicate you won't make additional revisions revisions the county surveyor can't refuse to file your map period full stop they have to file your map when you say you're done it's right there in the law super clear right you tell the county surveyor i'm done making changes they got 10 days to file whether they like your map or not okay um now i want to just tell you guys a story uh this didn't happen in central california this was in southern california but i was i i did a, a an alta survey on a parcel of, in southern california and it wasn't on a map so i had to file so um i submitted my map this is a few years back i submitted my map and i got a, a response back from the map this the, the technician that was doing the map review and she sent me like an eight page agreement legal agreement a uh, contract that i had to sign to file to get my map checked and basically the map said, I swore on the life of my firstborn child in my mother's grave that I would pay whatever bill the county surveyor decided to send me for map review and some other stuff I really didn't like. So I got a hold of the tech and I said, hey, I'm not, I'm not going to sign this. I said, I don't have to sign it and I'm not going to sign it. 
Um, and I, they had a pretty steep checking fee. It was like 1400 bucks, I think, the deposit. I said, you're gonna check my map for the deposit. And then when you're done spending that money, you're gonna file my map, because I'm not sending any more money than that. Um, and she said, we're not gonna check your map if you don't sign this agreement. And I said, I suggest you put your boss on the phone. So she did, she put her boss on the phone, the license surveyor, and he told me the same thing. He said, I'm not gonna check your map unless you sign this agreement. And I said, yes, you are. And so uh, I called the board and I said, hey, you know what's going on down here? I was like, uh, I'm not signing this agreement and this guy's refusing to check my map. And the board said, we'll look into it. And a couple days later, I got an email from the tech saying that they were checking my map. Okay, now I don't know what's been going on and I don't know if that county's still doing it. I don't know how long it went on, but like apparently I was the first guy to rock the boat about that. Um, so no excuse for that. Right? The county surveyor has an obligation to check your map and to file it when you say, just like you have an obligation to submit, period. Right? That you, it's like, it, it's they don't get to charge you whatever they want. They don't get to make you, you know, follow their CAD standards. They just, they, they don't get to do that. That's not what the law says. Um, one of the things I explain occasionally to county surveyors and their staff is, you know, I work in counties all over California. I am not having a separate template for every county I work in, record of survey template. I'm not doing that. And I'm not changing my CAT standards. You know, some counties want a solid circle for found lawns, some want a hollow circle. You know, some sur some county surveyors don't like my font. Some of them don't like my north arrow. I don't care. I'm not I'm not working on 62 different CAT standards to get my maps filed. I just, I'm not gonna do that. Um, and I, I can't afford it. Um, so that, that's what the law says. Now, let's go back and talk about, <clears throat> you know, what where I think some of the heartburn comes in. Oh. Thank you for clarifying. I appreciate that. Okay, so let me, yeah, let me re respond to that too. So I'll, I'll go back and take another look at that section, Keith. Thanks for, for adding that. Here's what I think is important, whether it's 10 days or not. It's, it's pretty clear to me in the law who decides when the process is over. It's not the county surveyor. It's the submitting surveyor. You decide when you're done. Like the law, the law, he gets to, he or she gets to put a note if they want the county surveyor, but you decide when the map review process is finished. And that, that's pretty clear to me in the law. And I think that's what's important. Now, I want to talk a little bit. <clears throat> let's talk a little bit about what I think the county surveyor can do as a private citizen if he doesn't like your boundary resolution on your map. And, you know, why I think that can potentially cause problems and maybe a better way, okay? I'll just, I'm gonna throw that out here. So I don't think the, the law allows the county surveyor to refuse filing your map because he doesn't like your boundary resolution or she doesn't like your boundary resolution. I also don't think the law allows the county surveyor, she can't tell you that you have to change the way you did your survey, okay? But the county surveyor as a private citizen has the same rights as every other private citizen. If they wanna file a complaint with the board, they can do that. Now, I've had two instances when I had a county surveyor call the board about my record survey, okay? And uh, the first time that happened, uh, the county surveyor, or the board told the county surveyor, file in its map. The second time it happened, um, I'll, just, I'll just tell you, because I have no shame. Um, I, had, I had split curbs. Uh, I had split curbs to resolve a block in an urban area where there weren't monuments set. And the county surveyor asked me to show hard ties to the um, to the curbs, and I'll I'll just tell you guys where I was at. Like this was the third county surveyor that had worked at this agency and checked my map. This one map, I was on county surveyor number three, and I was getting pretty frustrated. And I told him no, I just wanted to have the map filed. And so the county surveyor called the board, and the board got on the phone with me, and they said, Hey, Landon, I think uh, the county surveyor has some a legitimate uh, gripe here, and and we think you should show hard ties to the curbs. Um, are you willing to make that change to your map? And I said, yes, I put the ties to the curbs on, the map got filed. And after that conversation with the board, any map I do now where I split improvements, I put hard ties on, because now I know that's that's what the board would like to see. Um, okay, so I think the, the county surveyor is in, in his or her rights as a private citizen to file a complaint with the board. Just like if I find your record of survey and think you did a crappy job, I can file a complaint with the board. Now. Here's what I suspect. I suspect the board's gonna get pretty tired of that. Um, 
<laughs> right? Like if I was if I was Rick at the board, I, I would get tired of you know county surveyors and submitting surveyors that couldn't get along. All right, so I wanna I wanna suggest an alternative. Um, and I I don't know how workable this is, but I I've, I've heard that this is being done now in some places in Southern California, and I think it's an idea that has a lot of merit. So I would encourage. The, the submitting surveyors on the on the meet at the meeting tonight if you get to a point where you have an impasse with a county surveyor reach out to your local PPC your CLSA PPC and say hey I'm, I'm at an impasse with the county surveyor I don't want this to get nasty would you take a look at my map and let me know you know if I'm being unreasonable or if you think the county surveyors uh, you know beyond the scope of their authority and um, and let Let's just say that you, for whatever reason, you're in a chapter that doesn't have a PPC. I'm on the chair of the Central Valley chapter PPC. Um, sorry about that. I'm on the chair of the Central Valley PPC. Send your map. We'll take a look at it. We'll send a letter over. Okay. And because the goal here, here's the goal. The goal is to try and get a neutral party to look at the map and, and see if think if, that if some type of compromise can get reached, right? without having to drag the board into it, right? I, I don't think anybody wins when we drag the licensing board into this. You know, he, here's what I want everybody to remember. The county surveyor wants to get a good map filed, right? And the submitting surveyor is trying to follow the law. And there's a lot of guys that aren't doing that. A lot of guys and gals aren't doing that, right? I mean, I, I'll just be honest with you. I think it's the minority of surveyors in California that are, that are trying to follow the law and file their maps. So we got two people that are trying to work for the public good here. Right, and it'd be nice if if we could find a way to resolve these differences without having to drag the board, the licensing board, into it. Right, so I've heard that this is being done in Southern California in at least one county, and I, and I, I just I want to offer that to the group tonight. If you just if you're working on a map and you just you've been beating your head on it and you just can't get agreement with the county surveyor, have our PPC take a look at it. Right now, like we don't have any special authority, but like you know, uh, and here's what now I've actually had a couple guys call me. <laughs> this has happened two or three times in the last year where, where surveyors have called me and said, hey, I'm having a hard time getting this map filed. Can you take a look at my map? And here's what I always tell the, the surveyors that call me. I say, look, I'm happy to look at your map. And I don't charge them. Just look at your map, and I'll tell you what I think. I said, but i got to warn you, if you send me a garbage map, I'm going to tell you that. right?" Now, this happened about a year ago with a map. And I'll just tell you, it was going into Alameda County, and it was a buddy of mine, and he was doing a boundary survey, and he called me up and he said, man, Alameda County just bled all over my map. He said, can you take a look at it, because I think these guys are just crazy. And so I did, I looked at the map, and you know what, I called my buddy, and I said, hey man, I said, I think 70% of these comments are legit. I said, I, I think it, they're at, you know, you're gonna have a better map if you if you do if you address the comments like your boundaries kind of it's pretty bare bones man like I I wouldn't be proud to send this map in and he's like you know what you're right that's what I needed to hear and he addressed the comments and sent the map back in um it's like that that's a that's a good resolution right like I you know that's way better than the board getting pulled into it right now it, it it's totally possible I'd have looked at that map and said, yeah, man, I think you got a good map here. I think the counties, I think they're crossing the line, right? I could have gone that way too, but um, in this case, it didn't. Um, so I just, I want to let the, you can send it to the, send it to the PPC and, and get a formal review. You can send it to me informally and just ask me to take a quick look. Like here's, here's at a minimum, if it then goes to the board, you know, if, if you and the county surveyor still can't agree and it ends up at the board, at least then you'll have an opinion from a PPC, right, to, 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 to back you up. Or if the PPC sends you a letter and tells you you're an idiot and you got a horrible map, like you might want to know that before that you let that county surveyor call the board, right? So I see uh, Dave's got his hand up. <laughs> but I do think one of the most important things the chapter can do is provide a PPC. Um, and here, here's what I committed to my chapter when we restarted our PPC. I said, hey, I'm going to make every effort to respond to every request we get and to make that as transparent as possible. And when it's appropriate, to, if we, if we review, review a situation, uh, we'll, we'll publish our findings. 
you know, just something simple, a one page memo even, right? Um, cause it needs to be transparent. You know, we, we don't want a good, good old, you know, a good old boy system where some people get a pass. Um, but I think, you know, that I'd even be willing, I mean, I'm just offering this, like, look, if, if, if I can, as, as the, as the president of CLSA Central Valley chapter or chair of the PPC, it's Central Valley chapter. If I can get on a zoom call with you and the County surveyor for 15 minutes and, and see if there's a way to come to a resolution, like. To me, that's how CLSA provides real value to members, right? And like, you know, we, we should be able to self-regulate, right? Without dragging in the licensing board, right? And, I, and here's, this is really important. This is why I think it's another reason why it's really important if we can to get CLSA more involved is because the, there's some black and white stuff in the law. You know, the technical requirements, one inch margin, north zero scale, right? That's black and white. Most of the stuff we argue with county surveyors about is not the black and white stuff. It has to do with what I call the standard of care. And I, I just like, I'm going to let everybody in on a little secret. The board doesn't set the standard of care. That's not their job. And that's not how the law works. Do you know who sets the standard of care? The surveyors that practice in a particular area set the standard of care. Now, there's some there's some boundaries on that, right? There's some... There's some common law boundaries on what you have to do to properly resolve a boundary. That's in the law, right? But within those boundaries, you know, there is a there is a lot of gray area. And, um, you know, the, it's not the board's job to define the standard of care. It's the profession's job to define the standard of care, right? And so I think that's why it's 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 really important, if you can, to have your, your local CLSA chapters be involved in those conversations and here, here's the other thing I think that, that's really important. Here, here's the most important thing to me as a surveyor in private practice. The most important thing for me is to know what the rules are ahead of time, right? Because if I know what the rules are ahead of time and everybody's playing by the same rules, I got a chance to compete, right? If I don't know what the rules are until after I've submitted my proposal to the client or if the rules aren't being applied consistently, that's when I get frustrated and upset, right? Because now you're hindering my ability to feed my family. And I'm gonna just, I'm gonna tell you a quick story. This happened in the Bay Area, okay? I submitted a survey in, in a Bay Area County and I got raked over the coals on this survey and I did a good job, right? And I, it took me months to get this survey filed. And I finally, and finally at the end, I, I ended up, it ended up getting filed with a note, okay? Now I went to work at a big engineering company and I sent in my first map to this county and it sailed through. And I remember telling my boss, I can't believe how quickly that map went through. Like last time I tried to file a map in this county, it was a nightmare. And he said, yeah, wink, wink. We got a special arrangement with the folks over there at the county because we do a lot of work in, in, in that particular county, right? Like that, hearing that kind of thing, whether it was true or not, hearing that kind of thing made my blood boil, right? Because what you have there is you have rules that aren't being applied consistently, right? And so that transparency is really, really important, right? And like, I just want to know what the rules are ahead of time, right? And so, you know, if, if you can if you can get your local PPC involved and they can work through some of these issues, like, look, I know now when I submit a map with when I've split improvements, to resolve a boundary, I need to show hard ties to those improvements. I know that now, right? I know, I just, it's now it's standard practice. So it's no longer an issue. I don't have to argue anymore with the county surveyor. I just do it, right? So for me, it's all about knowing what the rules are ahead of time, right? And I think where, where, where surveyors in private practice get frustrated is, you know, we, we, we are contractually bound to provide a, a boundary survey for a certain fee, right? And I just, you know, I don't know how many folks in public practice know this, but like, I don't get T&M contracts ever. Like all of my contracts are fixed fee lump sum, all of them, right? So like, I don't have an opportunity to go back to my client and say, I need another $2,500 because the county surveyor is raking me over the coals on this map. I don't get to do that, right? Like I got one shot. I got one shot to price that survey accurately, right? So uh, it's so part of being able to do that is knowing the rules ahead of time. Right. And, um, and it's, so that's really important, you know, that the rules are transparent and that they're applied consistently. And like, look, I would really love to move us to a world where 
every time a county surveyor and a private surveyor have a disagreement over a map, we're dragging the licensing board into it. I, I don't think that's healthy, and I don't think it builds good. I don't think it builds good rapport between pr the private and public sector in our profession. I think it's a bad way to do things, right? And like, here's the here's the truth. Sometimes the county surveyor is going to be crossing the line uh, on their authority, and sometimes the private surveyor is going to be submitting a bad map. Period. Right. So like, it's it's not like it's always the county surveyor that's doing that's that's going too far, or it's always the the private surveyor that's doing a bad job. Like. The reality is, uh, in fact, the few times I've been asked to check somebody else's map, I don't know, it's happened three or four times the last couple of years. Every time I look at it, it's usually a mix. You know, it's a 60-40 mix or it's a 70-30 mix, right? I'm like, hey, you know, I think about 60% or 70% of these comments are applicable and you need to address them, you know? I think this other 30 or 40% you could probably ignore. You know, it's it's a mixed bag most of the time, in my opinion. Right. So what we want to do is get to a place where we can quickly, you know, where we can quickly get these issues resolved and get the surveys filed. Because here's what I want everybody to remember. The guy in private practice that submitted the record survey, he's in the minority of the of the professionals trying to follow the law. Right. The really bad guys aren't even filing a map. Right. Those are the guys we need to go after. We need to go get those guys. Right. And I do. I turn them in. You know, but the guy that's trying to make the submittal, he's at least making an effort to comply with the law, right? And I think we got we got to give those surveyors credit for that. 